Rained much of the night. It is apparently going to continue. The weather has done nothing to dampen the enthusiasm of the, I don't know, nine trillion mosquitoes that live in this area. We managed to keep them out, but as soon as we opened our little tent, they were waiting at the door, and in they came. We're hoping that with some light, there'll be some sky and sun as well. The rain pours the roof. The rain that normally lands on our heads. As soon as we open a window, in it comes. It covers you in all the sensitive bits, like those bits between your legs. have woken up and like little children they are up and playing long before their parents are ready to. The entire troop now thinks that it's light enough to come down and have something to eat. Probably croton fruits which they will then deposit once they have been passed through the alimentary canal wherever humans are. The rain is now pelting down and it's difficult to know what these chaps are doing here. I think he is probably sheltering, although it does seem like a slightly pointless episode, effort. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven baboons in this little tree. There's a baby there. And there's a tiny baby just there. I think that this is going to improve Kirsten's mood to see such a tiny baby. It looks very squashed up there. I don't, it doesn't look like the most sheltered tree either. I'm trying to figure out why on earth they would choose to be in it. Still inside.
Yo, it's a cool sh scene with all those yeah. marabou. Jeez. This is starting to rain quite heavily now. There is a tree full of scavenging beards. And what they are scavenging on, we are not entirely sure. But given the number of them, and given the plethora of different species, and the fact that that is not the only tree in the area that is filled with scavenging birds, one is forced to draw the conclusion that there must be something dead and big nearby. We had lion tracks in the area, and triangulating between the dead trees filled with scavenging birds, we can probably deduce that there is something the size of a giraffe that has been butchered quite close by, but too far into the bush for us to see. And I would just say that even if I were allowed to walk in there, I would think twice about it, because it's very thick, can't hear anything for the rain, and there are cubs. So, that's our update from here. Marabou stalks, white-backed vultures. We did see a leopard-faced vulture as well. So a great horde of expected birds. The fact that they're all in the trees tells me that the lions are still on whatever they've killed. Alas, my dear. <sighs> Here is a giraffe that lives at Ihaha Camp. Ihaha, Ihaha, We've got an enormous troop of baboons here. Far too numerous to name. Babies. Ooh, bit of a fight. Well, that was exciting. There's the big aggressor coming now. Everyone will stay out of his way. And anyone who gets in trouble with him will defer their anger to someone else. Yes, there's his lady. I wonder if that's not where the trouble was caused. His lady appears to be an ustras. A condition as mentioned indicated by her very swollen rear end. Uh, very unfortunately crud encrusted. That was fascinating. So that's probably the dominant baboon. And what will happen is that he will allow the others to mate with oestrus females. See how she's trying to sneak away. As long as she's not at the height of her oestrus. Once she gets into the midpoint of her oestrus, he will not tolerate others having a go, as it were. Yeah, there's a lovely scene there of a tiny baby and the female who's been having her bottom picked clean of dingleberries by the sub-adult behind her. Oh, now the baby's having its butt cleaned of dingleberries. That's delightful. Young male, obviously not as good at cleanliness as the females. And now that his butt is dingleberry free, he's having a groom and he thought he might have a bit of a suckle. Gorgeous. This baboon's name is Charles. And as you can see, Charles is like one of those human beings who has no friends at school, but doesn't care. Charles is very comfortable in his own space and in his own company. You can see this by the fact that there are no other baboons anywhere near him. Allow me to zoom out to show you. 
that's in. See? Nothing else. No baboons. Just a couple knocking about up there. There's one. Eating some croton fruits. Baby, look at that. You missed them, but I didn't. I think the baboons are eating this much more. That looks like it, don't you think? That's what seems to be passing out of their butts onto every surface in our camp. And this is the caparis fruit. The Which cap one? caper bush fruit. This is the caper bush fruit, and here is a fresher one. Yeah, that's it. Don't you think? Mmm, it's sweet. It tastes like guava. Guava. But I don't think there's much flesh on it. I think it's largely uh, seeds. I think we've solved our mystery, don't you? Yes. And there is the caparis fruit, as opposed to the croton fruit. And I'm pretty sure the baboons are eating both of those things. travels in Africa have I ever seen impala as relaxed as the ones here in Chobe. Now I have not been to Chobe before, this is my only time, my first time, and I am drawn to the conclusion that something in the vegetation here is making them high or very relaxed. I suppose in much the same way as uh, some human beings become high or very relaxed from the consumption of cannabis sativa or products derived therefrom. Now I do not see great fields of cannabis sativa growing over here and so I must conclude that it is a native vegetation of the area and maybe it is the fruits that are so beloved of the baboons here that are causing this incredible mellowness in an otherwise very skittish antelope. There also seems to be a giraffe, as Kirsten points out, that thinks it's an impala. And although we are not very close to them now, if we were to drive closer, it would be very difficult to actually make them get out of the way. And we are going forward now. And as you will see, the Impala are not moving. Just lying in the road. Nowhere have I seen Impala behave like this. It is a great effort for them to get up out of the way. Some of them haven't bothered yet. Even the youngsters goofed out of their little brains. Come on. Thank you so much. Yes, some of them just staring lazily around. Eyes glazed over with whatever it is. Good grief. 
Action stations. Someone is stuck. We Over think. there, in what looks like uh, either a meat wagon or a horse wagon. What is that thing? It looks like a little caravan. Like camper. You seem to be in some distress. 